So I'm going to call the meeting to the Bethel Select Board to order this Monday, June 26th at 6 p.m. Our usual chair, Chris Jarvis, is away. So I would accept a motion to appoint a temporary chair. So moved, I appoint uh, Dave Eddy to be temporary chair for tonight. Second. You okay with that, Lindley? All right. So looks like Dave is it. Okay. All right, Dave. So it looks like Greg is here. He's your first appointment. He's online. Okay, Greg. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. So I let this select board know that I gave him a copy of our part of our email that um, you can stop me when I'm wrong here, that the 24th of May is about when Tessie's closed. You're requesting a reduction in your water bill. Um, I let them know that how the EUs are that you currently have 14.99, but that um, you may want to remove the 0.28 because you don't have any employees. And then um, perhaps requesting to go to a vacancy rate for your remaining seven for the restaurant. Um, and I did the math. And if the select board approved those changes to get you to seven regular EU for your apartments and 7.71 for the restaurant, with the new rates in July, um, the it would be seven hundred and eighty-two dollars and sixty-eight cents per quarter cheaper for you. Okay. Yeah. But you might. I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for, sir. So you're we're, gonna wanna. Uh, tell we, them. We, there's no plans to reopen the restaurant. Um, if it does open, it would be with a third a new party, and it'd be sometime next year. At the earliest. Okay. It won't open this year. So my question is the uh, seven point seven one vacant. That's a vacancy rate on seven point seven one that you've calculated. Yep. Okay. And removing the point two eight because he was at seven point. He was at fourteen point nine nine. Excuse me. Seven of them are his apartments, and right. then it left seven point nine nine and point two eight of that was covered was employees, which he does okay. not have. Okay. Sure, could I ask you to just repeat the dollar amount? I was hearing the EUs, but I missed that. Sure, Lindley. Um, what I said was because the new rates are going to take effect July one. I calculated based on the new rates. So if we moved him if you remove the 0.28 eu and you dropped the restaurant from 7.71 you know to 7.71 vacancy rate his quarterly bill would be um less sorry i've lost my place he would be it would be he'd save 782 dollars and 68 cents per quarter i had to base it on the new rates because um the old rates obviously go out, out the window so um because if he stayed yeah so the new rates yeah there's a savings of 782 68 per quarter but as he just stated he has no plans to reopen the restaurant he has it on the market but Thank you. You're welcome. And if I read the previous information, the actually the new rates are actually a little lower than they are. The new rates. The are sewer lower. rate is a. Oh no, you're right. The water rate water is a little. Lower. Yes. Yep. The water rate is lower in, starting in July than it was in. That's right. I was thinking yeah. sewer. Yep. <clears throat> the water rate decreased from. And they're not on sewer because they're not on the sewer. Right. No, he's not on our town sewer. So I guess we need to ask him or talk to him. I don't know what you guys want to do. Um, so how does that sound to you, Greg? Sounds fair to me. Okay. Um, I guess we need a... I'll move that we uh, grant the... Uh, moving the restaurant to vacation and reducing the EUs to account for their not being employee. Okay. Do I hear a second? 
Lindley's better Lindley. hand up. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Passes. Okay. Uh, so, Greg, your new bill will come out in July, so that'll be the savings for you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Therese, just to clarify something that's not really related to Greg, but should the building sell? Lindley, we can't hear you. Oh, are you able to hear me now? Did we lose sound? Hang I on. can hear you, Lindley. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> I bet Paul can too. I'll just mouth things at them. Now try. How about now? Yes, we were having technical difficulties. Lightning. Yeah, it's, it's thundering and lightning here. Oh, fun. Um, not, I don't think this necessarily is related to Greg. Uh, it's more just a curiosity for me. Let's say the building sells and there's a new owner. Will the vacancy rate hold with a new owner or will it reset to the full amount and then the new owner would have to come back to the board if they if they weren't going to open a restaurant and wanted a vacancy rate? Right. It'll have to, it will re, if a, when a new owner buys, if they're going to open a restaurant, obviously it'll go back to regular rate. And um, if they're going to do a different use, then they would have to come in and talk about that as far as what they're going to use the space for. Okay. So, well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. That's fine. I'm taking notes. No big deal. Thank you. But for letting me know. Okay. So Greg, did you, were you able to hear that at the end? We kind of had a yes, little technical okay. issue. Okay. So your new bill doesn't come out until July and there was a reduction in the water rates um, because our budget dropped a little bit. So we'll move that section to vacancy, remove the employees and go from there. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Okay. We have any public comment. We have several people on um, Zoom. I can't read the names because my. Oh, it's Laura. Uh, Laura Perez and Paul Valley. I was trying to figure out how to raise my hand on the Zoom thing, but I don't see how to do it. But I, I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, I, I was just going to give an update about the Juneteenth event that the Equity and Inclusion Task Force um, hosted on June 19th. Um, we had a big barbecue and bounce house and we didn't have live music, but we just had some music playing in the background. And it was just a really great community event. I think we had more than 125 people in attendance. And Farmer James did a brief introduction and spoke a little bit about the importance of celebrating Juneteenth. And we had students from the Sharon Academy who participated in hosting like um, some carnival games and also supporting small kids in the bounce house. Um, and just overall, it felt like a really lively, um, fun community event. And I, I was so happy and proud of Bethel for hosting it and wanted to share the update that it seemed like it was really well received by our community. Did you end up doing the parade, the um, parasol parade, or did you get rained out? I think that was different. So Juneteenth is the event that was in honor of the end of slavery. Um, I know, I'm just curious about um, the um, event. Okay. That was totally separate. And those events for Pride Fest were not hosted by the Equity and Inclusion Task Force. But I did hear that it got right, like the many parts of the Pride Fest events, which were the following weekend, were rained out. But they still also had all hosted all of the indoor events. And while I wasn't in attendance, I did hear that they were also really well received too. Oh, that's great. No, I knew they weren't related. I was just curious since we were okay. talking about it. I made, I wondered, I was hoping they didn't get rained out. It was kind of tough. Some, it was a little spotty at times. So I know we were so thankful for the Juneteenth event because there had been rain really every day leading up to the event and every day afterwards. Yeah. That we were really, I know, for beautiful <laughs> weather the night of our event. That's great. The fire department did the barbecue, right? There's no. No, we had um we actually hired a company called We Smoke Everything and um they did a great job. The food was oh. awesome and it was really sweet. Their um 
three young men who are new to the Bethel area and their moms, all three of their moms came one from Houston and two from Massachusetts just to support them during the event, which I found really heartwarming and sweet that they were all there. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I hadn't had their food before, but it was really good. And I also learned that they're doing like a pop-up barbecue business at Roma's if anybody's interested. They're there a few different days of the week. So yeah, we ran out of food really early because we we only ordered enough food for 50 people because that was double what had been at Juneteenth in the past. And so to have like 125 people was a big growth in participation. Um, but That's yes, we should great. order more food. <laughs> And next year, right? Yeah. Next year. It was yeah. it was absolutely great looking at the people who were there and enjoying it. Uh, the, uh, yeah, young, old, the diversity, uh, it was great. Well, thanks for coming, Jean. Well, that's it for my, my update. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laura. And Paul, you got some you have any comments? No, I'm good, thanks. All right. Well and well, we need to back up. <laughs> uh we we need to approve the agenda. Does anyone have any additions that they'd like to add? I do. The Christian Hill tire issue. Yeah, sorry about that. I got um the Christian Hill tire issue. I did get here back from the lawyer. So I want to add that after the water project update. Okay. And I can give an update on the energy committee. I'm with that. Under any other business? Yeah. Move to approve the agenda as amended. We have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, so we can move on to water phase two water project update. Okay, so we what I know so far is that they <clears throat> the contractor is planning on starting on Monday, July thirty first. Their normal work hours are going to be seven a.m. to five p.m. Monday to Friday. Generally speaking, obviously, if they ran into something or something came up they needed to deal with, they would deal with it. Uh, the plan, the contractor plans to start on Sand Hill right now and then move to Highland Avenue. <clears throat> so the schedule's not yet been finalized, but that's what I'm aware of. They may at some point have two crews working in Bethel, especially when undertaking the railroad crossing, um, because that section of work is going to take around two weeks. And but that really depends on railroad flagging when that's going to happen. Um, the winter shutdown will take place sometime in November or December. We'll resume in the spring. Um, as I said in my notes, it's a contract term of 170 days to substantial completion. So they will start, then they will pause, and then they will start again. And they still only have 170 days. It's just not going to be consecutive. Um, Aldrich and Elliott were, because of the Bernie Sanders, you know, the earmark for 750000 um, I had to put out a request for qualifications for the Sand Hill for the project for the engineering, and they were the only submitter, so that worked out good. And Mike was uh, had Mayor of Aldrich and Elliott was reaching out with a couple people at the state, so I still have yet to coordinate that work. Um, so it depends how fast we can move through the federal project. I would like, obviously, to have the same contractor that's doing the water do the stormwater and the issues with sand hill but i can't commit to that right now right, right. <laughs> i'd like to but i can't so that's what i know about that if anyone has any questions at 170 days that's uh um five days a week yep. is that how is how it's laid out yeah yeah but they might work saturdays or something if they have to if they had to yeah if they you know hit something or you know something went awry which like the weather yeah like the weather yeah <laughs> yeah exactly or like main street they ran into oh. mm -hmm. i don't think it's going to be quite so bad up that road i've seen, I don't that, I've seen that road so. dug up once in my life i don't think so because then it's like there and highland and bicentennial and um you know graham and so yeah it won't be the you know bicentennial big traffic was issues. a field 
Yeah. So it's not, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, that I don't think that should be any problem. No, and they know where the water line is there. So, and we don't own the sewer line there. They have their own septic right. on Bicentennial. So fingers crossed. Okay. So well, then, that was the Christian Hill tire issue. Christian Hill tire issue. Okay. So the last select board meeting we talked about what was going on that we have i'm not sure we have i don't think we have 10 people but they were had popped a tire during the road construction then we i sent them to the contractors insurance they were denied our insurance company is also denying them so we talked about what you know should we just pay for the tires you know so that people aren't caught in this limbo where they would be forced to go to small claims court or to, you know, it just seemed, in my opinion, unfair. The select board had asked me to speak to the town attorney a little bit to see what, um, what his take on it was. And he said that normally the town is only responsible to pay for claims for damaged tires if the residents can demonstrate that the town was negligent. Most cases, this means the town was warned of the hazardous road condition, such as a large, you know, pothole or something, and failed to respond and complete the repair within a reasonable time. So here, he's without a few facts, but he said, um, when the residence complaints began, if there was sufficient time for the town or the contractor to take remedial action once the complaint started coming in, then we may have responsibility. And we did certainly that happened. The timing of the tires was before the contractor finished. Um, so I'm not gonna read you his whole things, but he did say, um, he said that, yes, that, you know, obviously we're always worried about precedent, um, but he said, this is case is somewhat unique because the damage results from a construction project and not normal wear and tear on roadways, which we would, you know, that truck hitting a pothole, that sort of thing we wouldn't cover. Um, he said, my proposed solution of paying the claims without requiring court action does have advantages. Um, paying claims that are submitted would hopefully avoid allegations and upset from residents that the town isn't treating them fairly and it might be the most cost effective solution as well, depending on the number of claims, because obviously if we needed to go to court and defend this, if you say you were going to spend $3,000, that's, that's gone very quickly. So at this point I do have that I'm aware of, um, one, three, I think I'm, if I have to go back and look through the list, I think I'm aware of seven to eight tires um that will be and we're talking you know one tire not all four so because we did not take remedial action um when we had the opportunity <laughs> it's tough you know and <laughs> i think for me personally i i just feel like the residents are going to get the shaft by having to go to small claims court. I just think that's so unfair. It was our project. And yes, some things happened that shouldn't have happened there. Also, I admit there was weaknesses in my RFP. So, and I specifically stated that I didn't specify how many lifts of material, certain things like that. So, you know, we didn't think it was necessary. However, apparently it was. So there's enough problem here to go around that it seems to me the fairest thing would be to either you're going to pay a flat fee for one tire you're just going to have them bring in a proof and we're going to reimburse each you know tire obviously um we're aware of the players so if 20 more people came out of the woodwork right now we would be no you know because they would have come forward by now so um that was his only suggestion is that we obviously ensure that the claims have a reasonable evidentiary basis so i would assume if we haven't heard from them by you know now right yeah, have, then right. we're not going to pay those claims so somebody would have called trust me we've heard mm -hmm. from everybody else so repeatedly <laughs> in some cases 
So do we do a flat rate per tire or do we just say, send us the bill for the tire? I mean, how does that? I think that we, in fairness, it may be to get the bill because everybody's tire is different. If, if you drove, you know, your car tire may be cheaper than my truck uh, tire. than Dave's truck <laughs> tire, you know? So for me, that's part of my yeah, I think so because I'm I'm afraid that if you just gave everybody two or three hundred dollars, that could just rub salt in the wound, you know. So, um, are, like I are said, are we able to identify at all why this happened in such big quantities? It just doesn't seem like something that happens typically with road construction. So, why this job was it so prominent? So um, a couple of reasons probably was in some cases, you know, we don't know what the status of some tires were. Maybe somebody's tire was had less tread on it than somebody else's, but we certainly are aware that the material, um, the, the town and the contractor may disagree on the, we agree we spec the correct material. We believe we spec the correct material. We just believe that maybe means and methods weren't specifically followed so that when the material this material in particular is overworked it separates the stone from the fines so it becomes the stone can become sharper so it could be a combination of maybe somebody's tire how fast they were i went up and down several times so did the road crew and but there's just so many factors at play i only went up and down a couple times if i was going up and down that road because i lived there or worked and was going up multiple times a day obviously my chance just increased exponentially so <clears throat> it's definitely a, a unique situation i've never seen it before i've never seen it in 18 years but we're... well and i guess my my questioning kind of is leading towards if we say yes to this what what protects us the town in the future i know you were mentioning you know doing a better job with the rfp and stipulating that but you know are we setting a precedent that should somebody in the future pop a tire maybe because they were running on bald tires and they're like hey but you know the town did this in the past i'm gonna get them to reimburse me for my tire you know i just am looking at it from that perspective and how do we protect ourselves if we say yes to this so what the attorney said is um there is a reason to consider the the you know the precedent the presidential impact of the decision and whether it would lead to more claims for tire damage in the future Although this case is somewhat unique because the damage result from a construction project and not normal wear and tear on the roadways from the usual case that involves, you know, when people hit a pothole or something like that. Obviously, in the RFP, we would certainly in the future specify means and methods and lifts and that sort of thing, which these RFPs are going to become, you know, 20 pages long. So I do think that this was such a unique situation. If we were doing a project and somebody hit a pothole, we're definitely not going to cover that. I mean, I think that that's kind of the disclaimer here is that this is just a one time and so unusual. I would have expected their insurance company to cover it, but, um, or our company, our insurance company to cover it and then subrogate, but they felt it was the contractor's responsibility. So they weren't going to do that. And I think in this case, there's definitely precedent, but there's also monetary as far as are we more responsible by making the choice to save town money by not ending up in some crazy lawsuit by paying them or, but I, I understand what your concern is. I, I, I do think there would be I'm not sure we'd be setting a precedent because we've just never done this before and and I've never seen it before. So okay. thanks. I don't know. It's a slippery slope. I agree, Lindley. I, I do agree, you know, but just because we did it once doesn't mean it, you know, there was definitely a multi things at play here that I don't see happening again. But I don't have a crystal ball either. So <laughs> not say anything yeah so dave's not going to say anything he's recusing himself from this issue and um as a resident of christian hill and somebody who popped a tire <laughs> so he's having no participation whatsoever with the issue so at this point i mean like i said i have all the names and addresses of the people that have approached us um because either talking to them sending them on to the proper insurance company originally or 
you know, through doing their claim through our insurance company. So I'm happy to, um, you know, reach out to those specific people, but um, somebody would need to make a motion we, or whatever. Can we kind of on Lindley's line, can we go about the ball tires? I don't think most people do, but do we know what the status of some of those tires were like? Some of them, I think some of them had just, you know, a couple of years use on them, but uh, obviously I don't know. I haven't, you know, inspected the tires or anything. So I don't, I don't know the status all, of All or not, they weren't the only one. So oh, right. yeah, two of the vehicles were brand new vehicles with brand new tires. Right. Which were not his. I can, say, not I, I can say that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Right. So, so some of his bad luck. Yeah. If 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 the condition was such that right it, um I will move that we reimburse the the, the specific, specified individuals for their particular uh, claim on the understanding. Mm -hmm that this is a unique uh, circumstance. Um, um, yeah, I'll just leave it. And not new town policy. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Gene. <clears throat> so before somebody makes a second, I have to write this down. Specified individuals, that have already made, can we add to that and say that have already contacted the town? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I know it's hard to. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm still not going to vote, but no. I'm going to ask a question. Because mm -hmm. um, some of the people were involved with two tires. Are you just, this is a one tire per claim thing or you I think it's or? it's reimbursed them for how many tires okay. they lost you know yep that was my intent. yeah yep. is there going to be a second second those in, all those in favor I, I, all right I'll make a note Dave and we need one more <laughs> thank you Lynn, Lindley okay thank you you're not missing anything in the chat <clears throat> okay so minutes and communication do we have anything uh is that or is the town manager report part of that or the town manager report i gave you was there were some legislative changes regarding cannabis so i put that in your packet saying that um basically it further restricts how local governments can regulate cannabis establishments um they can continue to regulate some cannabis cultivators. However, they can no longer use local ordinances to regulate public nuisances as applied to outdoor cultivators. So, and they can no longer be regulated by Act 250 or municipal zoning, but we never really touched that anyways. We really, the only thing that we heard was a local person on Main Street. We have seen, um, you've approved, you had or received one permit for a grower but that was all we had seen. Um, it just saying local zoning authority over all sizes of outdoor grow operations is now prohibited. If we had any concerns about cannabis cultivation, we would have to forward them to the Cannabis Control Board of the state for regulatory oversight. So not that you had much power over it before, you have less now. Um, that's really it. Okay. Uh, then you're right. You had two sets of minutes. You're right. Minutes. Minutes of. Uh, not used to bouncing around quite so much. May 22nd. Of May 22nd. And June 12th. And June 12th. Um, I'm going to ask that we do them separately because I was not here on the 12th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I did entertain a motion to accept. Uh, minutes of May 22nd <clears throat> as printed. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I would 
uh, accept the motion to accept the minutes of June 12 as printed, unless there are some additions or omissions. So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh -huh. And I recused. Yeah. Okay. So now we are at other communications. Well, let's see what you had in your packet for fun things. You had, <clears throat> let's see, select board minutes, uh, Bethel Energy Committing Committee meeting minutes. Excuse me, that was a mouthful for some reason. And then the updated May budget status report, as well as I did put in, it was a nice article in the Herald about the um, equity and inclusion book club. So I photocopied that and put it in your packet. It was a, a photo and discussion of the book and talks about when their next one is. So I thought you should see it in case you didn't read the Herald. <laughs> so that was in there. So reading this, this was interesting mm -hmm. about the, how the minutes came from the energy committee. So is, it, is that where I uh, uh, assume that Scott is now leading the charge? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that should say forward fest at that one place. Uh, toward, yeah. On the magic. yeah. It says forward festival on three up from the bottom. Oh, oh, forest festival. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got you. Um, yeah. Uh, Scott agreed to be the kind of run the meeting person. Okay. Um, and uh, so is, is Nicole going to submit a, a resignation to the select board? Um, I'm not sure that she knew she needed. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, okay. So that's all right. I can, if I remember, I'll email her. Um, it says guest was Spandergat, Chris Lester, April Peterson, Steve. I was no last Nero. I bet I'm guessing. Steve, Steve Nero. Stevie. 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 Was yeah. it Stevie? Yeah, he's um, Scott's. Um, yeah. Son. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he was there. Yeah. Okay, they just didn't say in the minutes. Um, is Chris Lester and you have April Peterson in the minutes and then April Lopez in the meeting minutes. So you have one name in the attendees. He didn't, he didn't remember the last name of the of Vander. Okay. So I don't know. Um, I was just curious, are they going to join April and Chris? Yes. Which April? It's one person. <laughs> right. Um, that was the thing that I said I was going to do is I'm going to email them and tell them they have to. Yeah. So you're going to email April and Chris. So that. Vander. Okay, and Vander. Oh, perfect. So you've got three people. So we had three people. Nice. New people. So that. Chris, Chris is an uh, outdoor yeah, design and group. Mm -hmm. He lives in Barnum, right? Yes. Not that that's bad, then. No. No. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm, I know who the right person yeah. is. <laughs> they, they all had uh, interest. And, you know, so that's, that's great. That's a, that gives me some enthusiasm. That's wonderful. You really score. Nobody ever gets three people at once. That's and pretty one, good. And one, Rose, was looking for another meeting that she couldn't find. So she, she walked in and it was the energy committee and she said, well, can I stay? <laughs> you said, sit down. That's great news. That was great. Yeah. Um, and so they have basically said that they're going to go back to the beginning, the drawing board, 
and take a look at the original, why the committee was created, what its mandate was, uh, take a look at the uh, town plan, energy portion of the town plan, and uh, proceed from there. That's a great uh, idea. With, uh, while continuing to do the, uh, the forward fest E EV show. But that's that's the update. Okay. So I got them those documents and uh, and they're they're just trying to figure out well it's a it's a reboot time. Yeah. So they are moving forward with the EV thing for Ford Fest because I know Scott that's came in and he was questioning and I said, look, even if you just need to do a booth this year to hand out information about residential home improvement upgrades and programs that, that's fine if you're overwhelmed by all this at once so i know i yeah. said we'll talk he was said well we have a meeting and we're going to talk about it. i said all right well whatever you need to do is you know fine with us so okay well good thank you okay any other business necessary to come before the board is there any questions on the budget status reports? Are you good? That's your fault. That is my fault. Okay. You make it so there really isn't a whole lot of questions. And well, I know, but there's still Once there's things I have questions of. So and I did say in here that oh the oh I didn't tell you is I'm off on Friday and Monday. So I'll be off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, the auditors will be here. I'm like, ooh. Boy. So, <laughs> so I, I do have fun a, begin. I do have a little comment. Yeah. Um Christian Hill mm -hmm. is I know we talked about berm removal when we grade roads and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're losing what I call Fay Hill, the first Fay Hill up. It, it, yep. It's half gone. Because you feel like they're wide and going because, too far wide. No, well, I don't know what you want to call it, but the water can't get off the road. Okay. Water can't get to the ditch because there's a berm on both sides of the ditch. Oh. On both sides of the road. I got you. Okay. So there's All ditches right. six inches deep, a foot wide, going back and forth but all the way down the road. Berm. Okay. So I unfortunately, you. we're losing our gravel mm -hmm. into the waterway. All right, so berm removal, Fay Hill, Christian. Okay. And it's not just no, it's, it's not, not there. It's That's the a good whole example. Road. That's just my and example. just below my house towards Bethel, probably four or five hundred yards. <laughs> I'm not going to grade that much more because there's a big hunk of ledge showing in the road. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like road berm ditch. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And this is a personal thing, but I'm still going to say it. Mm -hmm. I have a curb cut, a new curb cut that I've approved, had approved, but the, the ditch doesn't match what my requirements were to put a culvert in. So now my culvert is a third plug on the out set out. Yep. Because there's no ditch there for the water and silt to go. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Call. So I don't know what to do. Call the road foreman. Okay. Definitely. Call the road foreman and tell him what your issue is, and he can come up and take a look. How's the speed sign? Uh, the speed dolly. Don't tell <laughs> my you wife, my wife says program. that damn light's not supposed to speed, uh, blink at me unless I'm going too fast. Yeah. Well, it blinks no matter what. I said it at, well, and it shouldn't. It, I had said it, so it was only in a certain parameter. I won't even tell you. It's trouble. I had programming that thing. It's supposed to flash at 36, but it flashes no lower, matter what. Lower than that. Okay. Well, you know what? It gets people's attention. Oh, I did yeah. hear from, um, I can never remember his first name, uh, Garrow. Yeah. Jordan. Jordan. I always want to call him Justin. And he did say thanks. He said he thought he was happy with that. And Lindley, you gave me the radar to take gun, but it had batteries stored in it. So it was corroded oh, no. a little bit. And then um, I tried, I cleaned out. It wasn't bad. So I was surprised why it wasn't working. But I can't get it to to work, so oh, I'm like, that's oh. a bummer. yeah, I didn't know. I mean, because when the batteries were corroded, but the whole it wasn't. It looked like the little um, head down at the bottom, the little um, motherboard looked fine, 
but I don't know. I did you say that they were free? Because I was thinking if I sent, I mean, I can buy a new one for like sixty bucks, so I didn't think it was worth sending back for repair. Yeah, that one was one. Um, I believe the source was AARP when they were. I it was early Better Block stuff, and they left it at the Arnold Block. I think just in case folks wanted to use it, and then we tried to get them to take it back, and they were they didn't want it back. <laughs> so that's funny. All right, yeah. So I I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to get rid of it. I or, so I'm sorry. I tried to fix it, but that's okay. But, and I looked, I did Google it to see how much one was going to be, but anyway, so we did get the dolly out and then the other two speed signs, there's one currently by the school and one by Mascoma. we got our other two. They just came. So when the road crew has a chance and probably Richard, he's the one who installed the other two, we're going to, we'll put one back, you know, on North main and then one so that when you're coming towards the school where there used to be one on the right by Dennis Woods, because people either direction they seem to be flying so we're going to leave the dolly on christian hill for a little bit and then move it to church street see that i will admit that coming in from randolph Hmm. 35 and then 25 it happens pretty quickly i mean you really got to work at being 25 where you go by Mm -hmm. you're right i agree that's kind of like i don't know if they're going to change that 40 mile an hour speed limit sign close to the bottom of Campbell Crow, because it's three tenths of a mile where you see a 40 mile an hour sign and then you go around the corner and there's the stop sign. And that's like the New Jersey, Massachusetts turnpike and people just shoot right out of there. I did ask Morgan about it. I can't remember what his response stop was. Ahead or something, because even though, you know, it shows Route 12 going this oh, way, that he's way. He's waiting for his July. He has no more sign money. Okay. He's, he's he can't he's like well i can't buy any more something like no you can't so i think he's waiting okay. for his july budget because yeah. we did talk about it yeah because that can be you know people that come and they're just looking you know and they see the 40 mile an hour sign then they <laughs> go around the corner it's like and if there's a car already stopped there i mean i've seen it come close driving towards town people shooting out of there and then seeing people in front of me like slam on the brakes because there's somebody at the stop sign it's like oh shit yeah so one thing i did forget to tell you sad news actually under the list under the town manager's report is mo and judy brigham are two two of our listers the other is paul valley um are have their house on the market and are going to be moving so yeah they may be we're not september maybe october so obviously you know not great situation um i told them they couldn't move but (laughs) <laughs> but they, they're going yeah. they're going anyways uh despite me saying no um anyway so i did we have nemrick starting the reappraisal i reached out to nemrick right away because i know that they you can hire them to do listing stuff so my conversation with chris mealy from nemrick was like look you know Teresa, if you guys had somebody in the office and off you know that worked in the lister's office on their computer they can do some of the updates and then he said nemrick could come in just to do the values. Um, I also did work, uh, contact another local uh, town person to see if they'd be interested in coming on as an assessor. So is that way they could be the assessor and maybe we'd try to hire someone to work in the office to do the computer stuff. Paul, who was on earlier, is not interested in doing the computer work. Um, and there's a lot to it to be a lister. It's like a three years before you really know. And a lot of towns are moving to outsourcing it. Now, didn't we didn't we budget some extra money to work that way? We did, yep. We budgeted money for an assessor that we didn't have one. And then Mo and Judy were, you know, doing trainings and doing a good job. And then they were just would you if they had some they were they had a couple they were looking at hiring um outside help for for like doing the the dam the hydro project in a couple places that they were unsure how to do but nemrick was like just wait and we'll do them in the townwide reappraisal the other thing is we need someone to oversee the townwide reappraisal so i had a staff meeting in house to say okay because i'm the only one who works 40 hours a week pam doesn't kelly doesn't um, D3, so I'm like, look, if somebody wants more hours, now's the time to step up and you want to learn more, you want to do this or that. And uh, like I said, I also had talked to somebody who has a business doing this to see if they would be interested in coming in and they are a Bethel resident, but I think what's going to end up happening, my guess is, um, we, is that at the next town meeting, you'd probably be voting to 
get rid of the listing position and contract it. And what you may have to do until then is, you know, we just have to hire, you know, somebody either if we have people that want to be listers to be more figurehead staff, then we could appoint somebody um, if we feel we need to fill it, you know, but so we just kind of have to see, I'm waiting to get a response. Um, so we have a response from Nemrick, but I'm waiting for the person um, that I had approached to see. One of the things we talked about was sitting down with Nemrick, myself, Pam, a local contractor and saying, okay, what is it exactly the responsibility is going to be for the town during the townwide reappraisal? Because Mo and Judy are obviously in it right now, but as soon as they leave, we know that it's mailings by street. There's a whole process of stuff that needs to happen. And because um, the local contractor is that I talked to is very familiar with all Bethel properties and he's been in, you know, he does reappraisals. He's a certified reappraiser. Be a nice person to have on board. So I, I kind of have my feelers out and we'll see what will happen. But I just want to let you know. Hi, Lindley. Just curious. My recollection is um, somebody sitting on the Slack board cannot be a lister, like could not serve in that role as well. Is that correct? Oh, I'd have to look at the sheet. There's a, that this, I'd have to look to see if they can. Um, I'd have to look, Lindley. I can't remember if those are conflicting or not. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, Will you let me know what you are? You want to be a new lister? want is a funny word isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I, i'll have to look lindley because i can't remember what are compatible and incompatible offices i'll vote for that waiver yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh did you just vote me into office yeah <laughs> no one nominated me compatible um offices with listing or, i'm not uh, sure i, I know that Pam might be willing to just be a figurehead. Like if we had to technically had to, had to, had to have three people, Pam is willing to, I think, be, you know, be one of the people. And a town clerk treasurer can be a lister. That's very common in a lot of towns. She obviously doesn't want to do the whole training, but if we needed a signature on something, but we'll wait. Hopefully they can get through to October. And by then the town reappraisal will be underway and, you know, Hopefully we'll have a handle on it. And worst case scenario, we're not the only town that goes unfilled with positions like that. It's <clears throat> not against the law. It happens. And they will have already, they have done the grievances. So they've sent out the change of appraisal notices. So if they were going to leave, you know, now's the time. Well, except for that pesky two-year rolling <laughs> reappraisal. Um, but but the uh, reappraisal people will handle those grievances, right? They will, along with your regular listers. But since it won't be a bio, then we will have had somebody on, somebody on board. Somebody on board, yeah. But it could come to the fact that at the next town meeting, we're voting out the listers and going to hire people. But we can, you know, that somebody said- well, It that, doesn't sound like it's easy to find somebody. So hiring somebody may not be no. as easy as just- putting it out a exactly i mean yeah. nemrick would pick us up and would definitely pick us up but it's not cheap the best option with nemrick would be to also have a person who maybe was just an office assistant who came into the lister's office you know so many days a week just to to learn vt pi and to because that's the new software that's coming down the pike and to process all the property transfer tax returns and because Nemrick can do that, but they're going to be a heck of a lot more expensive. So I don't know. It's it's not great news, but I obviously I'm very happy for Mo and Judy. I was just teasing them when I said they I'm like, no, <laughs> they're like, well, we didn't really want to tell you. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's why, because you can't go. But um, so I thought we'll see. maybe they were just moving into the town offices. Yeah, see, you they know, there enough. I know. No, they're going to move to be closer to their son, to one of their yeah. children. So, you know, we wish them well. You can't keep them forever. But anyway, so I'll just keep you updated on it. I've got some feelers out and we'll see. I'm hoping. Okay. For... Well, that's right. I'm hoping for a, a, the local person if they're willing to, you know, that would be a really good fit for us. But we'll see. Curious. Yeah. Do you remember, um, I'm just recalling when we've been looking for listers in the past, we had um, sort of all put feelers out to different folks. And one of the pieces of feedback that we got back was that the rate of pay was too low. And I know we've been 
incrementally increasing it. Do you know what it's at currently? So if we want to try to talk this up to people, we kind of are speaking accurately to what the current rate of pay would be for somebody. I can't, re I can't off the top of my head tell you, I don't know what it is. I, th I think the thing here, I will be honest, I'm torn. Part of me thinks that we should move away from local listing and move to more professional, you know, because if you go in and talk to Mo and Judy, I mean, they're going to tell you three years and then the state just launched new software and the state is going to be mandating every six years that we have reappraisals. And there is so much to it now that for someone to come in, you know, to uh, and ask Paul, he's been doing a little while, but to come in and it, it would be tough for us to bring in three new listers or two new listers and, and with Paul because they're not going to know anything. They're not going to know the software. They're not going to be able to do any of the work. I, I just don't know. I, I mean, unless somebody was interested in working directly with Mo and Judy for the next couple of months to get them in the right direction. I don't know. Listers have always been hard to find. Um, and it's getting so, more complicated and it every is, year. It is so complicated. It, it's crazy. And I know just enough to be dangerous. So I don't know, Lindley. I guess, you know what? If you know someone that might be interested, send them to see Mo and Judy. Okay. That probably, okay. then they can get it directly from the horse's mouth. And if they're, you know, interested in it. And, but as far as the rate of pay, obviously, we're going to go more, you know, we're going to have to go up on that. But I, I want to say it's one of them is making 19 or 20, but, or maybe it's coming in the new budget. They're going to be 20 and 21 or something. Yeah, I think that that's right. I'm trying to remember. No, it's low because July one, I think they were going up because of the reappraisal, Lindley. So I, I do think that I want to say it's like twenty or twenty one dollars an hour. That's for the experienced one. The right. The non experienced is is, is is less. Is less. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, but we're gonna have to look at that because you're right. That could be a real deterrent because it is such a it's a hard thing. You've got to be really sharp to, to want to do that. And it's just a lot to it. So, and you can make 15 to $17 working at McDonald's. You can make 17 at McDonald's. Yeah, you're Randolph. right. It's, it's a true point. Yeah, it's crazy. It's true. We're going to have to really definitely look at it, Lindley. So I guess if they were interested, the salary may be negotiable. <laughs> so if you could find really good people. But yeah, I would say send them to Mo and Judy. Great. But yes, if people are interested in it, definitely reach out to Mo and Judy and make a time to go in and sit with them and see them. And and um, it's it's certainly a commitment. And mm -hmm. to become a new lister, they work Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. What are they? Ten to twelve thirty or nine to twelve. You'd be doing that. Plus, you'd have to be taking a lot of classes online on your own and. Um, for training and, and going places for training. So it's a pretty good commitment. But so sorry, yeah, I forgot to put that in my packet. I don't have anything else. Yes, Jean, you were talking about the speed signs. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, every time I see it, I say, I need to tell Teresa about this one. In um, uh, Anyway, coming back from the Two Rivers meeting, uh -huh. there's a speed sign coming into the town. And in addition to telling how fast you're going, if you're half a mile away you, and you're going over that speed limit, you see red and light lights. Red and uh, red and blue strobe lights. <laughs> it looks like the top of a police car. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> it slows people down. <laughs> I don't know if ours have strobes. How do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> don't. Well, if you know the red and blue, did you see them? Yeah, were they, were you speeding? They, when I got there, it, that there was no car there. <laughs> Flashing lights. Yeah. I don't think the one that we purchased has strobe lights and I, they're just, pricey. Yeah, no, I, I, I get just, it. These were, I don't know, I just paid the bill for two of them was like 6,000, 6,700, I think. But the dolly um, that I programmed, I don't think that 
that doesn't have strobes on it. it just it's, has that one I mean, just, white light. I'm just, I'm just making the comment. But yeah, no. Boy, it got my attention. I bet it did. <laughs> well, so you know what? It's something to think about. That's for sure. Because whatever it takes. Okay. I, Teresa, I have a comment on the signs. I feel like I'm taking us off track, but since it came up, I'll I'll just share like citizen input is that every time I catch, I'm caught speeding by a sign and it flashes, it really slows me down whatever town I'm in. And I'm always surprised, like, I, because I never mean to be speeding. It's usually just like mindless or whatever. And I love the reminder to slow down. So I just want to give that positive input that it really does change my behavior, whether it's in Bethel or another town. I think that's true. It does for me, certainly, especially like I'll leave the town office and, and there's the one right there by the bank, you know, and I'm always cognizant of, of that. So um, I, I think it does too. I mean, I, we've been out walking before doing the AR people doing the walk around town and people see them boy and they pile right on the brakes. So I do think it's good. So adding two more and then maybe next year we'll add a couple more in different spots. We're trying to hit all the entrances of the town so that slows everybody down, you know, before they meet pedestrians. Yeah, and Royalty Fleet love to park in the old Valley Motors parking lot. Yeah. It just looks like a regular vehicle there, and mm -hmm. they just pop them left and right. Yeah, we did have some enforcement on Christian Hill. We had asked, um, I had asked more um, Oscar and Justin to do some targeted enforcement on Christian Hill, and they made some contacts the other day, so, which is good, so. Yeah, those people, I knew once it was paved, people were going to fly. Oh, well, yeah, I People love new pavement. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll never slow them down up there. Mm -hmm. They need those strobes that you saw. Where did I see one? That actually, it's a it's a flash, so it makes you think they took your picture. Oh, <laughs> that's a good track. I mean, it's a big white flash. Did you yeah. say something, Lindley? Yeah. Can I bring up a controversial topic on the topic of speeding? Sure. So Chris isn't here to defend himself, um, but is there a plan or anything along the lines of um, putting the the bulb outs back in for the summertime, given that they're really about traffic calming and pedestrian safety, and we do have an uptick in traffic downtown in the summers with tourism? Yeah. Well, I will tell you this, that the road crew had been counting down the years until they were out of the woods on that grant. I mentioned them the other day and they were like, no. <laughs> so, that's why, that's why it's a controversial topic. I know, yeah, they don't know, but I also think them not wanting them is not a reason not to put in something that's a safety feature. Oh, they were do they were in town doing, uh, oh, the crosswalks and stuff, but where we had them last year seemed to be the best spot. We had one um, when you first come off from River Street Bridge on the end of, you know, Lang Durfee's Bethel Mills building. And then I I know that Penny really liked the ones that, that the crosswalk near Spalding Press. But removing the one in the middle of the town, really, we didn't. I didn't receive any comments last year. Once we removed that one that was by Brad's. The trouble with that is it, it's a curvature in the road. The road's too narrow and people don't know how to park next to the curb. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The there's all kinds of reasons why that one was not working well. Yeah, it's true. And, um, but the ones at Spalding really were nice. It kind of narrowed that crosswalk and drew more attention to it. Um, yeah. So no, we they just had got they. But I will tell. I'm not lying when I say they've been counting down the years because we talked about it. And they're like, wait, is this the year we can say no? <laughs> so they weren't the only ones. But the ones last year, I didn't get a single comment. Nothing got damaged. The only thing was somebody didn't like that they had cones on top instead of flower pots, but the flower pots had been kind of a target in the past. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not sure. So do you want them back out? Don't look at me. Lindley says, yes. 
<laughs> I think they're smart. As somebody who is a pedestrian in downtown, it certainly makes it safer to cross the street when traffic is heavy, when people don't have a good line of sight because there's parked cars. You know, it just gives a pedestrian more confidence. And it also is a traffic calming. We talk a lot about people speeding through downtown and they do slow down because they don't want to hit them. Yep. And I get that they're controversial. <laughs> but if somebody who uses that as a pedestrian zone on a daily basis, they make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, and less so now, honestly. Last year we put them out and there was no hullabaloo whatsoever. If I recall, with uh, the accessibility grants that took the A and A, that's what for all, uh, they talked about some sort of safety crosswalk kind of things as well. And so there's, I don't think that's inconsistent with that study. So you'd like to see the back. Okay. Denise? Yep. Dave? No comment. I, I don't, I don't. Care either way. <laughs> no, no, I just, no comment. <laughs> okay. Well, there's three of you. So I'll let the road crew know they can put them back out. I'll tell. Can, can the record please state Chris's ball belts will be being put back out. <laughs> yeah, I will say that. Chris's ball belts back out. Yeah, last year was fine. I, and like I said, Penny, we actually knocked on, you know, went to Spalding and asked her, hey, do you mind if we spray this crosswalk? Do you mind if we do this or that? So she was tickled that we asked and it kind of worked out. I think it really drew good attention to that first crosswalk when you come into Bethel, especially right there it kind of slowed people down and um so i do think that and the other one i'm not sure i guess it just brought you know the one on the corner maybe i guess i guess down. the only negative thought that i have is we already don't have enough parking in town mm -hmm. and by the time you put those out you've taken up probably three parking spots you're not, well, I'm not taking sure. up parking you don't take no. up parking you cannot uh, park that close to a pedestrian there. crosswalk. It is illegal. So just because people do, it's not a good reason to say you're taking up parking. It's illegal to park that close. We we yeah. looked at this time and again with AARP when they were doing this grant, and that's just not it's a it's not an argument. Yeah, the one by Langs, I think, is in the striped area. But anyways, well, well, the good news is what we also did was I did reach out to Kelly Stoddard for last year and said, look, we're not putting out all the bulb outs. Is another town interested in having some of them and she was gonna reach out so we had take use the ones we were gonna use and then but i'm not sure if anyone came and got them but we did offer a portion of them back to her in case another town wanted them so um but yeah i'll let morgan and aj know um so yeah. they can do that yeah i'd honestly had forgotten all about them lindley i was so focused on the crosswalks and my promise that they would be painted before memorial day and good on labor day that i totally spaced on the bulb outs we had a brief conversation and that was it but we did get some well, compliments I know, I know there was hope to let them go um yeah <laughs> i think the, i think the compromise that you've come up with of putting them on the on the side of oncoming traffic you know so it's not mm. four on every crosswalk it's two you know it's still protecting pedestrians it's not cutting down the same amount of lost space you know it's it's a good mm. compromise I think so. I think, and I think that's why we didn't get, because the couple of years before that were brutal and like a page of <clears throat> things, not all we were publishing. So <laughs> sorry, that's no problem. We'll let them know. They'll work it in their schedule. So thanks for that, Lindley. I totally had just was going to probably had just slipped to buy it and had me wasn't even on my radar anymore. So thank you. Okay, any other business necessary to come before the board? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye.